Yo, what's up? This is that guy, Rel, the host of the 313 Live Show, Detroit's Royals Podcast Show. We thank you for tuning in to us over here on podcast, but now you need to go over and check us out on our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is The 313 Live Show. Make sure you go over, like the videos, comment on the videos, and most importantly of all, subscribe and tell a friend. What up, dog? Oh my god, 313 live. 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 What's up, podcast? How you doing? We are back another week. All three of us is here on time. On time. I beat Danny today. <laughs> don't do that. Definitely. I was leaving church, and I don't know what other excuses you had. The other I was thinking weeks. about church, though. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. But now we in uh, the church is always good, but mm-hmm. we are in. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. Got my feet washed today at church. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. I'm, I'm going to step in and get baptized one of these Sundays coming yeah, up. Me too. Seriously. For real. But um, we are on episode 100, ladies and gentlemen. We made it to 100. Yay. Episode big one zero zero. Oh uh, yeah, so you yeah, know, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah, you, yeah. you you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> episode one hundred. So um, yeah, it's way overdue. Yeah, you know, I, like I said, we were all busy, and I refused to do a podcast without you guys. It just it wouldn't be right. I I did one show. And it was horrible on my end. Why, why you say it was horrible? What show is that? Um, the one I did. Well, actually, it wasn't. I didn't record it as a podcast. I did it <laughs> as a YouTube interview. Okay, okay. And then I put it over on podcast because it was a lot of people, like I say, in the email. Because I, I didn't know that a lot of YouTube don't advertise a lot of the American stuff overseas in other oh. countries. I didn't know that. And other people was like, well, we don't get YouTube in, from America. And... The, wow. Yeah. So that was like, you know, this is the only way we get to listen to your show is when you do a podcast. That's crazy. I didn't know that you get. So like other countries, like some of them don't have like YouTube.com. Yeah, they got. They do. It's they, just like filtered to like mm-hmm. Asian stuff. Like yeah. Oh, Asia, right, 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 right. Yeah, like it's filtered like a lot of it's people like, don't. We only get Canada and mm-hmm. American stuff or maybe Puerto Rico stuff. Like, so they're not going to really be seeing Drake on, they probably. Well, they can, but it's so it's like, you know how like somebody will post Drake's song, it's not their song, but right. they'll post an audio of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it'll be done for somebody who did it, who lives in Korea. You get what I'm saying? So when you search Drake, theirs will come up if you're over there, mm-hmm. opposed to when you hear somebody who did it in America will come up. Right. It makes sense. Yeah, and she, she's 100% right because, like I said, a lot of people was, you know, so I, I took the audio and got rid of the video part and put it on the, the track, you know, cleaned it up. And um, edited certain parts of it out and put it up as a podcast, and it it didn't sound the same. And everybody was like, "Well, it was still where? decent." Yeah, it was, but everybody was like, "Where was everybody at?" Oh. Yeah, that, you know. But that's that's the thing about everybody know that okay, we are as one as a team. So everybody is like, "Where is everybody else at?" You and did that by yourself. Dynamic, yeah. Right. And well, the, they don't have to ask that now. We back. Yeah, but then I did put in the um comment section you know the description that this was a previously recorded show for youtube and i just brought it over the podcast temporarily i mean for you guys as of now so until we get back to hold you over and they wasn't they was cool with it because it was should nice daughter but they wanted everybody interacting in it. and i was like okay well now i see how important i knew how important all three of us was but i really saw it then you know, all three of us is important, and people want to see all three of us. I definitely want to shout out the YouTube channel because there's some definitely some some serious hardcore three on three live show fans over there. So if we could get y'all to come over to the podcast side and just you know listen to us on there because we can always drop it on the the YouTube. YouTube yeah. mm-hmm. And I was looking at the comments on the YouTube channel too. People be saying some wild stuff, man. Yeah, I have to stay off of there because you get into a fight on YouTube. <laughs> I, you know what? I I love. 
eviction though, this I found out that YouTube is um it's a bunch of kids. Oh, and pretend, trolls. yeah, and trolls pretending to be adults, right? And you know, um shit shit just get crazy, but you know, when they know that you love that type of shit, it makes them mad because they know what well, damn we can't get to this motherfucker, so it is what it is. But to the audience that's out here listening, mainly you local hip hop artists and you local R and B um artists, whatever it is that you do, we have a show on YouTube once a week, every Thursday at eight o'clock Detroit time, eight PM Detroit time. It's called Pump It. <laughs> Detroit time. Yes. Pump it or dump it. I tell Detroit time, I ain't with all that Eastern other shit. Standards. Yeah, that <laughs> Eastern standard. No, we Detroit time, <laughs> goddammit. Eight PM Detroit time. And um the show we feature a lot of artists, local artists, music. We play it. And um, the audience, they are the judges. The live, the audience is watching live stream. They are the judges. And they some tough ones, too. So you got to bring it. Yeah, very tough. So all you local artists, please send in your music to the 313 Live Show Music at gmail.com. Once again, the 313 Live Show Music at gmail.com. Leave your name. The name of your producer, the name of your track, and please send it in MP3 format. Please do not send me no goddamn link to your SoundCloud or your YouTube channel because we will delete your email and it will not get onto the show. And we're going to block you. No, we ain't going to block them. We're just going to delete them. <laughs> right, so so <laughs> you better hope I ain't looking at the email. Well, if you're looking at it, then hey, y'all, hearing J Street is going to be the one doing the blocking, not me and Danny. <laughs> So what's going on this week, Danny? What man? What's crack a lacking? I do want to talk about um, the stabbing that happened at Fitzgerald High School. Man. Oh yeah, man, yeah, that that's was crazy. Deep. Well, it happened in Warren. Shout out to where I live. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. But um, Warren, Michigan, where J Street live at, y'all not Detroit. That shit <laughs> happened in Warren, Michigan, where he lives. <laughs> yeah, with the white folks. Yeah, yay. But um, from what my understanding is, the young they got into it over a a do. Now both of this this is the killing part. I look at the young lady who was in who who was the cause of the situation. She is going to prison for the rest of her life. The other young lady is dead. And the gentleman who's still out there, the young man, guess what? He's gonna move on and he's fucking another woman. <laughs> and, and, Go, go ahead, go ahead. No, then. Go ahead. I no, but he, no, he is because he's moving on. He's he's gonna still keep on living. Oh yeah. And you know, both of these young ladies' lives are ruined. And, and from my They're understanding, over. yeah, over. One is over. One is ruined. Oh, both of them are pretty much over. over right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and, and both of them were were straight A students in, in high grade point. They averages. were friends at some point. They said. Yeah, we're friends, and all of this is because of a dude. Well, I was watching on um, Facebook. They, you know, for some reason now, they just stream everybody getting sentenced, getting mm. sentenced, and everything. And I just think that's so crazy that they stream it from the courtroom. But anyways, basically, like they would not even grant her any um, bail, um, even though she like this is her first offense or whatever. They would not grant her any bail because they said it was premeditated. Mm -hmm. And I think they want to um, preserve the safety of all the witnesses because it was definite witnesses. But um, her her legal defense is going to um, play the insane card oh, and plead insanity. Uh, I think so, though. Because, I mean, I was thinking about it. And so, think about if you, I don't know, like, okay, so as a child, well, she's 17. But as a kid, even as an adult, when, when like, when you are, when somebody's telling you something and you believe it, and that's, like, when you were 16 or 17, like, and somebody was like, I love you, you was just like, oh, this is the person I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? So I could I could see that like she probably wasn't in her right mind because she was probably so infatuated with what she thought was love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but man, you you know you. I don't think she was going to kill. I think that she was just trying to hurt the girl. Yeah, well, that's you all think over with now. Um, she did say they the witness and the teacher and everybody said that she was screaming, "I'm going to kill that bitch." So I think I wonder like what happened. Yeah, I, I like do the too. Story. Yeah, because you know it's more to the story, Definitely. and you know you want to know what happened to make her do this. But 
at the end of the day, there's nothing that's going to um, justify it for her killing that young lady and everybody got it. It's over a dude. Ladies, young ladies that's listening to this show and young men, you guys mainly, quit playing with these young girls' hearts. Tell them you love Stop them. Stop playing with everybody's heart. Yeah, quit, yeah, period. Quit playing with everybody's heart. Quit telling these women you love them and, you know, just to get what you want out of them and then you get it and you really don't love them. You just spitting game. You know what I'm saying? Some lame-ass game. You're wasting people's time. Yeah, because yeah. you, you got to look at it. It's a lot of women out here nowadays. That is down with you having a woman and them being your side piece. Yeah. So just be real with it. You know, if that's not that young lady's thing, you cannot take her choice from her to make her, you know, be with you. Don't lie. Give her a choice. Let her decide if she want to be with you. Yeah, in the three on three live show, we promote love, you know, a man and a woman or, you know, however, you know, you get down. But... We promote love. We don't promote people hurting people's feelings, you know, leading them on or nothing like that. So, you know, because that's how situations like this happen. You know, you know, one person wanting to kill the other person or, you know, I don't really think it could have gotten any worse than that. But, you know, other things can happen, too. But, you know, you, clearly we all see that, you know, all of that crazy stuff does lead to stuff like this. So, man, look, we got to get it together, man, people. Most definitely. And you got to look at it like this. Your first relationship, nine times out of ten, is not going to be your last one. You know, every relationship, I believe... But when you're a kid, you don't know that. Because, like, even... even Not even when you're a kid, but even when you're an adult. Like, when you are focused on a relationship or a person, like, your mind starts to get boxed in. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you be like, this is where I'm at. And you can't see past that. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's hard to think like, oh man, like, you know, when you, your first love or whatever, you just be like, this is my first love. I love this person. This is the person I'm going to be with. And then they break your heart and you, you don't think you can ever get over it. And then you look up and you be like, on to the next. Right. And I technically, you know, I technically don't even think it have to be like your first love. It could be like anybody who you talking to. Cause like once you get into like a little, you know, a uh, relationship or anything like that and you know, it's. It's, it's kind of hard because you'd be blinded, man. You but, um, yeah, like Danny was basically saying, you're right. The young ladies, when you are young, you're not thinking like that. But, you know, the older you get, you know, we think, I guess we think different. But I always thought that women, you guys were were supposed to be smarter than us or a little bit more advanced than us. And I don't think no 17-year-old boy would have did no shit like that over no chick. I haven't heard of it in Michigan. Because... Women are not like at sixteen and seventeen. Women are naturally like seeked out by men. So any male attention that like there's not a shortage of males getting attention anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like Believe in that. school, like he has like a, a a buffet of women to pick from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, or it could be at work. Or me, wherever. It's not a shortage of men looking for the opportunity to talk to a girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But women don't naturally seek out men, so we're waiting for we're waiting to be seeked. And, and I, I kind of want to stop you right there because I was just going through a little situation just off of what you just said. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Why? Why is it? Is it like are men supposed to say something to women to uh, to initiate some type of like interaction or why it can't be the other way around i mean i feel like traditionally it was like men find women mm -hmm. because like men are supposed to find their wives true however i feel like in this day and age like we have to go find a man and go slide into his dms like and what's the matter with that <laughs> it's just it's like because where where a girl might be sliding into your DMs on like she trying to talk to you, you know what I'm saying? You might think she trying to slide into your DMs to get down. Yeah. Well, well that's the if, if let's just, let's just be real. When men seek women and women seek men, we are eventually going to have sex. That's what we're looking at this about. That's you, not You can't true. let her know that though. Yeah, you're not going to let the woman know that, but in in most But then men, don't slide in my DMs. It, but then most men when we look at a woman, we're looking at a woman as a, how we attracted to her, the beauty of a woman, and like, oh, damn, 
I want to hit that one day. So let me do what I need to do to get to that point. And that's where it's at in men. And so that's why women are not seeking that because well, I'm not seeking that, but that's why women don't actively pursue men because if a woman is pursuing a man, a man is going to think what does she want to have sex with him? Not true. Yes, not, true. Not the, maybe Y'all the lying. Man. No, see, so it's y'all a, gonna think she wants something. No, but y'all it, gonna think she wants some money. She after mm. this. She after that. Y'all not gonna think it's genuine. Like, oh, she's really trying to get to know you to see where this can go. Y'all gonna think that it's a calculated move. Not, not always, because you know, you know the ones that are out for the money or out looking for something. You know them, right? You can, you can basically peep them out, smell them out. But, you know, you got some genuine women that is just saying, hello, how you doing? Just because you look nice. You know what I'm saying? Like you might smell good or something that you're wearing that they peeped out and they like it. So, they, how you doing? See, me, what I think is if a woman say something like that to you, you know, depending on how she say it, you know, even if she do find you attractive, she's not going to, you know, say that right then and there or anything like that to, init- to, to for her to initiate it. You know, you it's it, I, it, you know from my experience is it's like something that a man has to do. You know, especially if you're trying to get a good woman. You know, because it's like with a rat, you know, it's easy. You can say, "Hey, what's up?" And that's she. She might be trying to do something just off that, depending on what your status is, how you look, or just depending off that. But you know, I don't know. I guess females with class, like y'all, are hard as hell to try to get to, man. Yes, yes, it is like an educated black woman who has a you know has her head on her shoulder, has a good job, and just got things going for himself. It is hard to find. That like, is not hard to find. It, it is like, like come on, Danny. Like let me say this, Danny. Now. A all woman, of my friends you just described. Right, but I'm just saying. Uh, okay, First gotta look all, at it. That's, no, it's no, it's hard to find somebody who is who is matching that. Right, that's but just listen. A lot of men who have this men shit want together, that, but no, they ain't bringing that to the table. That that's true. A lot of men are not bringing that to the table, but the ones. You know, like myself, like J Street and J Street, we have our own shit. We own shit. You know, own I own the business. J Street self he is employed on well, his own you're shit. You're not employed, in this conversation because you're uh, not on the market. Right, so right. How about you take yourself off this I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Me and period. I don't know. Like, J, J Street is on the market. I'm on the market, but I, I, shit. I'm, I'm uh, just saying. I'm hopefully, just saying, going through. I'm we, just saying, I'm hopefully, I'm trying to be off the market. You know. But I'm just saying, like J Street, right? You in cuffing season, huh? Okay. I love. I'm in full, <laughs> full. It, yeah, this it's is cuffing season. It's it is. Right now, it's cuffing season. Oh, I got. We got a potential, but I don't know. She might not. We'll see. Right. But you know, as I was saying, you know, a, a young lady that's your age, Danny, this got this got stuff together, a lot of men are it's looking. Uh, yes, yeah, some are intimidated and some are not. And the ones that are not, they, they ain't it's got hard shit. to. Yeah, they ain't got shit. And you, like, a bum ass nigga that's sitting at home ain't got nothing going for himself. You're not going to talk to that guy. And, and, and I know that. And but you got some women out here that will because they feel that oh I can change this guy, and that's where a I lot of women like go I'm wrong. Be lonely for the rest of my life. Me too, man. I don't think so. Because I with I all do, this. Because I feel like I I'm not even. In, I feel like I would have to move to find my husband because he's not in Detroit. Well, it's like I'm gonna say this because I've been all over the the men everywhere. We are they're all the same. New York, Boston. Uh, California, Arizona, every everywhere down south, it's all the same. Ain't you know? It ain't no different way. Like so, when women say that, I'm like, well, you'll be back to Michigan then because <laughs> it's the same there as well. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, you know, you, you just gotta you don't you just don't don't go don't give up on love. give up on love. And I, I think you're gonna find it one day, Danny. I honestly believe believe that you are and, definitely for sure. Because you you too you you got too much going for yourself, Danny, not to find it. Yeah, but here's the thing: the people that want me don't got nothing going for themselves either. Why you can't start from the bottom though? Uh-uh, I can't, I can't no. do that again. No, you can't do that again. And she and she right? Why? Why? And this is a lot of because I'm not at the bottom. Guys be wanting women to build them up and all that stuff and, and wait for their progress and all that stuff. Mm-mm. Then. They go and you build them up, and then they go and be a good person for somebody else. Like, when they got time for that? Most, uh, and she's not lying because every every dude that I knew that was a buster. Got with a good woman. That good woman built their ass up, and they moved on to the next woman and became 
a halfway better man for that woman. And, you know, it's just, it, it's a waste of time. Then by the time you build them up, you be tired. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this conversation kind of explains me because I'm not going to lie. Like, I used to be ain't shit back in the, in the 70s, but, you know. Um, <laughs> when you was a baby. Yeah, you yeah. was, was a baby. I was not in the 70s. I wasn't even here yet. I was just throwing it out there because I like that number. But anyway, um, I used to be ain't shit, man. And it was a girl. You know, I ain't about to drop her drop her name, make her famous or nothing like that. Ooh. But we, um, you know, we was kicking it for a couple of years, man. We was in a relationship. And I feel like, you know, she definitely made me a better person, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, it was a lot of things that I wasn't doing that I start doing that really made me a better person. And we after we broke up. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I'm like, damn, you know, I could have been, you know, really like better to her again, but it's like, shit, you know, let's branch off and try something else, you know? And it feel like the next person that I meet, I feel like she made me better for them. Okay. And I'm wondering, like, is that bold? Um, it's not bold because y'all would have an expiration date. However, I would say like, if... We was in a relationship, and I just kept telling you, like, can you please take out the trash? Can you please take out the trash? And then, like, you never do it, and then when you get in your next relationship, you do it. That would piss me off. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, just a scenario, but it's just like, why did you wait so long to be a better person? You know what I'm saying? Like, did, did, for your case in particular, did you ever start being a better person while y'all were in the relationship? I tried, but, you know, see, the what thing... What trying looks like? Uh... Not yeah. doing it. Okay. But um, you know, what I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying. You know, you we we young, we we were young, and you know, you never know that you know because, like I said, you know, you always think that you know you're gonna be in this relationship forever until the shit end, and now you like, okay, what's next? So, do you do you do you get into relationships looking for longevity, or are you passing time? Uh, I ain't been in a relationship in a minute. I'm just saying, like, your past relationships. Uh, were was... you thinking that you were going to be in this for some time? No, nah, to be oh, honest, wow. like, the last relationship, like, I kind of, you know, didn't even want to be in it. But it was like, she started doing so much shit that I've never witnessed before. I'm like, okay, well, let's go ahead and make this. Let's see what we can do. And it actually, you know, was like three or four year relationships, something like that. So Whatever. This is what I heard. Then she started doing some stuff that you never seen. I don't know what she was doing, but no, nah, just <laughs> it made like you stay. Just like yeah, just no, just like good girlfriend stuff. And she wasn't yeah. even my girlfriend, yeah. you know. So I'm like, okay, well, if she doing some shit like this, I can That's only imagine. Stuff, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you already like, even though like it lasted for a long time, it's like I was reading this. Just, um, we still good like, friends though. Still good friends. Still was, good friends. Shout out to her. She know who she is. Go ahead. I don't, I, don't, I was reading something, but also this one guy had said like, um, cause it was this article about why women, um, why a guy will have sex with a girl but won't like commit to her and stuff like that. And this one guy was saying like, men know within the first like few minutes of meeting you if you're somebody who would he would like. <laughs> That's a fact. Ever or just be like, this is a sex. That's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. We know off off of okay, me and what it is with us, we are more of the in, intimate. Like okay, if a woman got some, you know, good stuff, I'm not, you know, I'm trying not to cuss and use vulgar language <laughs> that much. I'm toning yeah, we it down. Try, we're trying to get that deal yeah, out here. Yeah. We're trying to get that deal. Yeah. So you know, I'm toning it down. So like most men, when we we go out to say okay, we we want to bear the woman first. You know what I'm saying? And see okay. You want to take her to bed first? That no, no, no. After after <laughs> after the date and everything, you date a little bit. You want to bed this woman because you you just let's be real. Sex is one of the most important part of a relationship. If your partner has bold sex, you're not going to be faithful to him, and you're not going to want to stay with him. So I feel that everybody before we get married, everybody should have sex. With that person before I see, okay, if this person is worth me staying with this person for the rest of my life. And, and that's that's just that. What you think about that, Jay? I think that um, <clears throat> sex is def- definitely a defining moment because uh, I don't know. Like, you, you, you de- if y'all are serious about that relationship, that is something that has to be done, you know. I'm not saying, like, you know, y'all have to, uh, ooh, but y'all, y'all have to, you know, share that intimate, you know, just to see if y'all can take it to the next level. 
Yeah. You know, because I mean, you could like somebody all mm-hmm. day, but I mean, if the sex ain't there, then yes, you can't can't be. That's just for us men. See, women. In y'all... my next relationship, I don't plan to have sex. And not in me no either. I'm gonna be stages. celibate for the rest of my life. I'm so. not gonna be celibate, but I'm probably not gonna have sex with with whoever I'm I'm in a relationship with for a long time. I believe Danny, but J Street, I think you full of shit. Yeah, I, I think me, I think so too. <laughs> Danny, because I just feel like sex complicates stuff, and then like people feel like sex is an obligation, and I'm not obligated to nothing or nobody. So. It's not an obligation, but no, it's, it's not an obligation. It's more like a can't think of the word. Mm. These damn chips are so good, I can't think. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I most men look at it. Yeah, it's, it's most men that like she says. Like other guys, it's a necessity. That's what it is. Like okay, we gotta have it. It's an obligation. It's a necessity. Not I don't look at it like that. The younger generation, because you gotta look at it. You got a lot of young boys that are growing up without men in the home, so they don't know how to teach these guys how to be men. I was one of them, and you know. But you gotta look at it, Jay. You don't dog women either, so no, so not no some, more. somebody you picked up somewhere along but the didn't line. You have to learn that from a, a from a male. You can learn that from having a mama. Yeah, 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 definitely. True. True. And learning, you know, just you know, just uh, just talking to different female and just seeing what they allow, because it's a lot of females that's not having a lot of the shit that a lot of niggas be saying. Like niggas, niggas be posting, like, oh yeah, woo, 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 woo. but when they get around a girl, that's not who they are. Right. You know. So then I got a question. You were saying like stuff that like men and like does is that a determining factor? Like would you allow if a girl allow a certain amount of stuff to go on in a relationship? Is that gonna like oh does she down or not on her? Like or it just depending on what it is. Just really depending on what it is. And I'm not saying just like I'm I'm when I'm so do you want your wife to be like oh let's have a threesome? No. Nah. Nah. No. Nah. No. Nah. No, that's that, that's off the table. That I'm should straight. be off the table. No, I'm straight, bitch. If you, I mean, female, if you're thinking like that, you need to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> that one question just took him out, took him back to his own life. <laughs> no, no, but I caught myself. I caught myself. Okay, you need to you know, get up out of here if that's how you feeling. You know and, what I'm saying? You should have got that shit done before we got married. Right. You know what I'm and saying? when I was speaking about the sex, I wasn't talking about, I'm talking about a guy who has been putting in work and like, I'm not gonna say it. yeah, it earned mm-hmm. it. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. not yeah. just no. Oh yeah, woo, woo, woo. we go out to eat one time, and then I'm talking about like he got some interest in what you like to do. He know where you work or what not like that. He's so talking, yeah. Sorry, let, let, I ain't gotta be no talking. Let, let, let's Dang. be real. Let's be real. And I learned this from one of the old school players. When a woman agree to, to get your phone number and talk to you or, or hook up, meet with you. Or whatever, y'all meet in person. She take your phone number, call you. If she call you, that woman know from the first day she met you if she gonna screw you or not. And I've learned that from an old school playing. Every woman I've ever asked that to, they say, yeah, we we know off the rip from the first phone conversation if we gonna screw you or not. Or well, we know when we first meet you, we That's know if we gonna screw be you. No second phone conversation. <laughs> no, a lot of, well, mm-hmm. I'm saying the women know the men. No, but I'm just know. saying like the men know too though because like. I didn't met some guys recently, you know, and they was just like infatuated, and I was just like, "I'm good." Like, why I'm you good, so thirsty? Enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's also was mostly older guys too that mm-hmm. was way older than me, and it's like they be like impressed that I'm who I am, and it's just be like, "Well, I'm grown." You know what I'm saying? But it's like because they so used to. I feel like Detroit is like in a bubble, and like. Yeah. People that date within Detroit like just don't be seeing nothing like like the guys that are like just oh, it's just exhausting. That that's like, why that's why like see here's a lot of thing and I tell a lot of these young cats education and transportation go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. You can't have transportation and don't have education. Then you can't have education without transportation. Because guess what? If you don't have both of them, you can't work. Because now they're not hiring you if you don't have education, and they're not going to hire you if you don't have transportation. A lot of these people, they be ask, they ask first, like, do you have any reliable transportation in the interview? Yeah. You, you, you got to present yeah. <laughs> proof of insurance. Yeah, let me just, let's see your insurance, <laughs> where your whip at. Yeah, no, all that on um, the public transportation is not reliable transportation, and they will not accept that. So, and it's, it's the same with these chicks. You got to look at, okay, 
a lot of if you got a dude and he got a car and he's driving around in this car and don't have his driver's license and his insurance, you need to leave that nigga alone That's because the majority his of Detroit. shit well, ain't Muslim, together. Though, the majority of Detroit, he don't have a car. Well, yeah, or if he don't have a car, something is wrong there. Okay, what's going on, brother? Why you ain't got a car? Why you ain't got your shit together? You know, you gotta ask that. You gotta ask all this before you go into the relationship. Why don't you have a car? Okay, why don't you have a driver's license? Why don't you have insurance? That, no. Why sure. are you in a stoli? <laughs> oh, you, you, but you're not lying because I know a couple dudes that have took females out on a date in a stolen car. Real talk, no lie. I remember a long time ago when I was like 19, like I was, I wasn't even going with this boy, but he was like my first love. But like, like we always like was like we always never like stay in contact with each other. Mm-hmm. When he was like, I'm gonna take you on a date, and I was like, okay. So it was like a double date with him and his cousin, his cousin girl, and like they picked me up in this like. <laughs> Yellow car. It was so funny. I was so embarrassed to be getting in this big yellow car because it was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, he was like, if we get pulled over, I'm jumping out the car and running. And then I was just like, in my mind, I was like, that's not the day I need to be on. Like, Mm -hmm. I was so scared the whole time. Like, what do you mean you getting out the car and running? What do you got on you? And how long ago was that? This is when I was 19. And look what's done happened ever since. Since then. Ever look, since then. You don't evolve. Ooh, a, a, you came a long way. Look at you. Well, you was probably already a long way back then because, Danny, you are a very smart young lady. So, I, at 19, if you, the way you are now, you how old, Danny? 27. 27. 19, you were, you were there because look how far you are now at 27. But I, I remember a situation um, a long time ago, right? This chick I used to fuck with. And um, this is like back in the day when debit cards were first really coming on the scene mm-hmm. and you can get the, the green dot cards, right? Mm-hmm. So um, this chick called me and was like, would you do me a favor? I'm like, what's up? She's like, I need you to come pay my portion of this bill so I can leave this restaurant. So I'm laughing. I was like, ah, you on the date? We used to fuck around back in the day. So I'm like, okay. I goes up here. Pay her portion of the bill, which was like $38 or some shit like that. And I'm laughing the whole time. This dude sitting here, nice car outside, dressed fresh to death. And, you know, the nigga's like, yo, brother, man, this is, um, you know, I got the wrong car with me. Whoop, whoop, this, whoop, whoop, that. Um, why don't you um pay my, my part of the bill? This is no lie. I can get the female on the phone. She will verify. No, listen, she will verify this shit. <laughs> And she was, and the dude was like, just pay my portion and I get her the money and whoop, whoop this. I take care of you. I'm going to pay you back for everything, right? And I was like, nah, dog. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and, uh, I took her. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to him and she don't need it because she didn't speak to him anymore after that. That was embarrassing for her. And I'm like, didn't your mom ever tell you that when you go out on a date, still take some money with you just mm-hmm. in case to pay mm-hmm. your part? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and never order more than what you got in your pocket. Right. I mean, because if, if he can't pay for it, you know you can pay for it. You know what I'm saying? Down. For sure. I remember this dude had told me, like, he had got my number. We was, we weren't even talking. He was just like, I never, like, the first time I see you is never a first date. It's never, like, he was like, I'm never spending money the first time I see a female. I was like, okay, like, whatever. So, like, the whole time we was just chilling, right? We was just chilling in his car. Mm-hmm. And he was talking, and the whole time he was like, yeah, like, um, this I was dating this one girl, and every time we go out, she would run up the bill. So one day, I just told her, um, when the bill came, it was all her. It was all on her, and she was mad, but I went paying that bill. And I was just like, what type of women do you deal with? You know what I'm saying? Like, but you telling me that you're not going to have my back if we if you took me on a date? And I ate what I wanted to eat. I'm I'm not calling you again. Like, I'm not Mm. saying that you need to pay, but I'm just saying, like, if you the man at the table, it looks bad. Exactly. Like, yes. What you mean? You're not going to pay the bill. You invited me here. You didn't say I had a limit. If tell me if I got a limit. If we're doing the two for 20, okay. (laughs) Look, ladies, let me tell you something. You want to know how you really hurt a guy? So I'm talking about not no little boy. Yes, what I need a to man. say. What I need to say. Yeah. How you really hurt his feelings is Seven. if y'all go on a date mm-hmm. and the woman says, you getting ready to pay the bill, 
And the woman says to you, you know what? Don't pay my don't pay for my food. I'm gonna pay for my own food. <laughs> That's how you hurt my damn feelings. Because it, it ain't no second date. No, nah, it ain't no second date. Not even that, because it's like this this wasn't even a date. She paid for her own food. Y'all just linked up. Mm-hmm. So I I don't know, man. That's you know, it happened to me before. You know, it ain't never happened after that because I'm like, you know what? I'm just I don't put your I don't care. You put your own damn money up. It makes you feel like a man when you just doing that, you know. It makes her look at you different. But what she was saying to you was that she she wasn't going out with you on no second date and that she needed to pay the first one so she don't feel obligated. So you don't feel like you did anything for her. Well, hold on. So wait. that was her clearing her slate. Hold on, wait. Yeah. Pause, rewind. Y'all went on that. a date too? Yeah, that's my people's. We still cool. It's your people's, but y'all not dating y'all together. No, nah, that's my we we cool. That's my people's. Oh, okay. Well, I'm so not, uh, yeah, in, yeah. in the today's news, <laughs> the Lions play the Sam. <laughs> The cane, you know, fuck, I forget the lions, man. But, oh no, I do definitely got to say something about the lions because I have to get something off my chest. Go, with ahead. go ahead. So this we is... we we going to the the three one three live show sports. The three one three three one three live show sports. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Hey. Anyway, um, <laughs> you can have that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, we we got to talk about the lions, man. We got to talk about this Monday night football game that happened uh, last week. Uh, they played the Jets at home. It was an embarrassment, man. And Danny asked me what the score was. What was the score? Forty-eight to seventeen. Same old score, Lions. I thought you were gonna say zero. Same old damn Lions. Near, damn near zero. So uh, Matthew Stafford, he had about uh, four to five picks. I uh, told my dad that he was gonna have a uh, two or three. He had more than that. I think we need to. It's about time to get rid of him, man, because we didn't yes. had him for about. He didn't been in the league for almost ten years. He's not doing anything for us, man. He he had the best wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, I'm not gonna say the history of the NFL, but definitely one of the in the top ten. Calvin Johnson made him retire because mm-hmm. it's like he's not going nowhere. He done been with the team forever, and they getting rid of all of these coaches. We didn't had he done had about three or four coaches. And they changing up everything around the Lions, but just not Matthew Stafford. And I want to know why. You know, they gave him all this money, and he's not performing. The game on uh, Monday when they played the Jets, mm-hmm. uh, that was Sam Darnold, uh, the Jets quarterback. He's a rookie. This mm-hmm. is his first year in the NFL and came out and scored 48 points against the Lions. Mm. We need to fix that, man. And it's it's only gonna look worse, man. Uh, when we played uh, San Francisco they need today, to just dissolve the football team. I don't know about that. I think <laughs> we need to just get rid of Matthew Stafford, get one of these black quarterbacks that's out here in the uh, SEC, bring them up here and try to work with them, man. What? They're finding all of these excuses on why the Lions are bad. I just think it's Matthew Stafford. But go ahead, real. Well, my thing is you got to look at it. You got the Fords. They are big money family. They billionaires. They do not give a fuck about that football team. They will not put no money in that football team. All they, That football team is a, a tax write-off for them. Real talk. That, that's all. It's a tax write-off. When you look at back in the day, you might be too young to remember Barry Sanders. He Barry, said I might be too no, young. I had a jersey. Man. Okay, but Barry, okay. San, Barry Sanders was the man. And he was the fastest, fastest, fastest motherfucker on that field. The next person that came close to him was, um, what's that dude's name? Um, who was fucking um, Kim Kardashian? I mean, banging Kim Kardashian. Bush. Um, Bush, Reggie Bush. He was the next thing close to Barry Sanders, right? But Barry Sanders left the Lions and gave back all the money because he wanted to win. And they was not building no team up around him. He gave back every dollar from the contract, early part of that contract, because he left. He said, fuck it. I can't do this no more. Every season, you tell me you're going to give me a team and you don't give me a team. Do you, what, what and what happened? What was twenty years later? Ain't nothing changed. Yeah, and let's see. That's the crazy thing because it was you know that was before Matthew Stafford was around. So mm-hmm. I definitely think it is the Fords. I want to talk to them. Like let, <laughs> they need to <laughs> call the three one three live show. What's the number real? Three one three um three five five. 2479. That's the hotline number. Yeah, we're going to verify that for everybody just to make sure it's right. <laughs> it's right. But it's 313 355 2479. That's our hotline number, baby. The Fords, please call that number. Call in. Ask for J Street 
because we got to talk, man. The Lions, and we, and I'm not the only person that feel this way. It's a lot of people in the city that's tired of the Lions losing every year. So we. Need I think to... the whole city is tired. That's why we just like we good. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, what you think those Pistons gonna do this year? <laughs> man, look. Even though I'm not a Piston fan, but what you think? I'm a Lakers fan. Uh, okay. I'm praying that the Pistons do something. Uh, I was I was very disappointed last season. Mm-hmm. You know they went and got Blake Griffin. They gave him a lot of money. And he didn't perform. Didn't perform. Um, didn't and, he come in mid season though? Yes. Yeah, but I mean, you know, for the type I of money like he that did some, some something right. He, I mean, he did. We didn't go to the playoffs. You know. I mean, did you really think? I mean, we went to the playoffs before, like a couple come years on. ago. <laughs> so look, man, look, I'm a diehard Detroit fan. Oh, I love mm. the. I'm just and we got a new Here's we got a new the thing the Detroit Detroit I think that if there was a, a bigger camaraderie then people would want to play for Detroit you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying like people want to play for places like Oklahoma and LA the Lakers. Lakers and like Golden State because the camaraderie of the fans is just amazing I mean even for baseball like the Tigers they do pretty good but the camaraderie for them not this year. Okay, not this year, but I'm just saying you can't like base a team's like legacy off one year. You know what I'm saying? Like the Tigers and the Red Wings hold it down, but they also mm-hmm. have very loyal and good fans. Yes. And people that support them and things like that. The camaraderie around football and basketball for Detroit is just garbage. Oh yeah, and I'm glad that she said something about the Red Wings. We're gonna uh say something about this too, three one three live show sports. Okay. Um Henrik Zetterberg, you know, that was the captain of the line uh the Red, Red Wings. Wings. Uh very good player, the captain of the whole team. He just retired, man. And How long was he playing? Uh, he been in the league. He Damn. been in, yeah. With some he, Hellcats he, out there. No, Shout a, out to Detroit. Yeah, he's an asshole. Uh, you know, oh, he's on his block. Yeah, yeah. He's wow. one. He's one of those guys that we talk about. You know that. He got some of those. Uh, we're not talking uh, about Henry Zetterberg. We're talking uh, about no, the guy out there in the Hellcats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's one of those guys that you know just a, a bum ass nigga. We just gonna leave it like All that. All he can do is make noise. That, that's it. And, and the killing part about it. You right, right here at Gross Point, and you know you you live in yes, mm-hmm. and you still in prime good prime real estate, but you still you do dumb shit. What it is is he come he moved in with his mama, and you he's know trying his to, life story. <laughs> oh, most definitely, you know, every, hey, around here we know everything around here. He moved in with his mama, and you know, um, he br- he wants to bring the hood with him when his mama's not around, not home. He do dumb shit, but when his mama home. You wouldn't hear none of that dumb shit, for real. He talked proper. Hey, hey, still yo. Church and, and this nigga's 32 years old. Wow. Oh, yeah, he older than me. Yeah. And See, and this, that's the type of nigga that be trying to holler. And I just be looking at you like... Relax. You wasting your time. Do it. Listen, I just put my uh, put my van in the shop, right? $1,500. And this nigga's a, a mechanic. Licensed mechanic, right? Yes, yeah, so I'm like, uh, you know, why don't you fix fix my fix this for me, right? And he like, uh, okay, I'll do it. Give me um tomorrow morning and I take care of it, right? So I'm the type of nigga that okay, if you're not I'm not gonna chase you down to give you no money. And everybody, you know, like, well, you know, he's a good mechanic, he's a real good mechanic, and I seen fixing people's shit, right? So I'm gonna give spend some money with him. So the pussy was more, I mean, the female was more important than the money, right? So he could have, I don't know if the shop because charged me. Because he thinks me, it's going to still be there. Right, but not, not this guy. But, you know, I'm looking at, if I was going to spend $1,500 out of the shop and you're going to give me a, a deal, I'm looking at, I know I'm going to spend about at least 900 with you, or probably 1000 right, to get, get it done, parts and labor. Okay. All that day, he didn't come that morning. So the other guy that's at the shop, I just said, fuck it, I'm going to put it in the shop. And um, the guy was like, uh, I'll come pick it up. Just bring it to me. Uh, don't bring it to me. I'll come pick it up. Came and got the, Came and got it. This motherfucker, three hours later after the after it's gone, like, um, hey, uh, I'm ready to do the job. I'm like, man, you told me that shit early this morning. I sent this sent it away already. It's gone. Mm-hmm. And the guy came and got, the, got it about like shit. The guy came and got it like about 12 noon. And here you is, 3 o'clock, you said in the morning. And so that just let me know it was a bad taste in my mouth that I would never do any business with that guy, ever. 
Yeah. Yep, so we're not promoting his business. <laughs> uh, yeah, prom- letting you know that he's fucked up business. Don't fuck with. Let's him. give his number out. Let's shut him <laughs> light real. Let's put him on blast. No, uh, we're not doing that. No, what's his What's his Instagram page? Uh, I don't know, and don't don't give a shit. <laughs> Well, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. We're about to take a short commercial break. One of my favorite commercial skits from our own Danny Av. Hey, everyone. It's your homegirl, Danny Av. And if you can't get enough of me on the 313 Live show, then I suggest you come over to Something to Brag About podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Just keyword search STBA. You can also find us on social media. IG and Facebook at Something to Brag About Podcast. Please come and check us out. We'd love to have you. Yep, that's right. Because if you like me over here, you're going to love me over there. Thank you and good night. All right, so we're back from our break. And now I'm about to introduce a new segment to y'all. New segment alert. Yeah, yay. And we'll just keep doing this segment every week. But basically, the segment is going to be called... What you mean? What you mean? And we're going to have to come up with some nice little music clip to go right there yes, for sir. this segment, you know. But basically, it's like the meme of the week. So, um, basically, we're going to talk about what memes caught our eyes this week, you know. What just, they just killed us. What did they knock us over the head with this week? And I think that everybody would agree probably except for real because I don't know if he knows about this meme. His timeline his might timeline be different, different according exactly. to you. Man, forget y'all. But, but you did notice I caught one and I tagged you and Jay Street. I was like, oh. Yes, yes you did. I mean, it wasn't that good, but you got it. You right. got it. I was like, okay, he do know what we're talking about. Yeah. He seen it. was what he thought of us. Real that was cool. Too. That yeah, was yeah. cool. It took him some days, but he got it, you know. <laughs> But basically, so this week, I feel like everybody was just like hitting your timeline with the Ed and Eddie oh, meme. Oh, my But God. they have re Okay, so I don't even know what the original meme said. I barely know what he originally looked like because when I say they had it, they didn't change his face color. My mask was in jail. They my didn't change was, his did hair you see color. This one? I seen all of Duh. the Greek ones. Everyone that was Greek, I've seen them all. Mm hmm. I've seen, man, okay, so one of the funniest ones was the reenactment of um, Ike and Tina. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one, too. And I like, let me go to that one and see what that one says. It said, um, something about you better get those buckets together. It was hilarious. <laughs> you know what? I deleted my memes. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go to my trash. They had the one where he was in jail. Uh, it was a bunch of them, man, and it, I I don't know who is creating these. I don't even know how it started, <laughs> but I'm happy whoever started it that they started it because this shit was crazy. <laughs> okay, so the one with um, I can see this at, hey Anna, anime, woman, stop playing with me. Now seeing that son like I wrote it, like what? <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, I saw that. I actually got that in my phone. Somebody sent that to me. I was like, in another one they did, they they dressed him up. The little guy, they made him black, and they put um, glasses on his face. Mm-hmm. And they said, I hope the judge give me probation since I got glasses on. Man. Because, <laughs> you know, a, a nigga will wear glasses to, to court like, I look preppy, I look smart. Like, mm-hmm. like nope, nigga, you look like you're about uh, to go see, to jail. See, right through that shit. Yeah. And then the last one is this guy. He Like, the background is a baby shower background, so I'll show y'all. But we will we'll post all of these to the page. Yeah. And it said... Um, with the Burberry shirt on? With the now. Burberry shirt shirt on because the background is a baby shower and some of me showing up to the baby shower when the baby mama family don't like me man <laughs> okay like when i say they didn't put they didn't put dreads on this girl they didn't give gave her edges swoop ponytails they didn't gave the little girl box braids like that ain't even a girl that's the crazy part that, i know they didn't change it everything oh the foot the last one <laughs> The funniest one is the girl. She got her hair slicked back in like a puff, and then they say, "Me when I'm um when I'm trying to get my hair done, but my hairdresser not answering the phone." Man, that's man. funny. Man, I got to see these. We gonna post it to the page. Oh, oh please do, please. I'm gonna show you we, we gonna, gonna put it on the Facebook page. On the three one three live. And show. Instagram. On the Instagram. Yeah, we can do both. Yeah, we can do them both. 
Yeah, follow us on there. Uh, what is it? At three, the 313 Live Show? Or is it I 31? like a pimp. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. He like yeah. I, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Who? Okay, yeah. Somebody. And y'all tag us. So if y'all see some memes, you know, tag the page. Yes, yes please. Oh, that's sweet. Or if sweet. y'all see some memes that y'all want us to talk about on the show, like memes that you like, yes. tell us what, what you, you mean. mean. Tell mm-hmm. us what you mean. The 313 Live Show at gmail.com. Hit us, hit us up, hit us up. And we will post your meme and talk about it and give you the credit for it. Yeah. If so, it's a good one. Well, it has then, to be funny. If, we, if all three of us don't laugh, then I don't know. We'll see. Well, if two out of three laugh, you got a good meme. Uh, so well, yeah, there we go. As I'm sure everybody know, you know, Machine Gun Kelly uh, dropped a diss track with, uh, oh, for Eminem a couple weeks Classic. ago. Classic. It was a dog. First. It was a dog. Classic. Oh, yeah. Why did he do that? Okay. Well, because um, Eminem, uh, he dissed him on the album. Right. So Machine Gun Kelly came with a you know clap Classic. back. Classic. It, it was Did a dog. Did you know that was... Machine Gun Kelly took the first shot? No, no, I didn't know because that because allegedly he said it's like my favorite rapper got me banned from Shade Forty Five or something like that. Like he was trying to go up to Shade Forty Five and they wouldn't let him. He mm-hmm. did. He, he, Eminem got him blocked from that. Come on now, you. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Well, let, let me let me just let me kick it like this. Okay, Eminem, great album. I'm gonna give him that. It was a great album. But Eminem dropped a disses on like why would you diss Ja Rule? Ja Rule has been has not been relevant <laughs> since what Fifty Cent destroyed him since nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, I mean. yeah but, but still he's irrelevant. So why would you attack him? This is my thing. I think Eminem was okay because everybody the last couple albums he did was kind of whack. So I felt that he's like okay, well let me come in here on some Fifty Cent shit. And just diss a lot of niggas, right? Now, the Machine Gun Kelly diss, I felt the Machine Gun Kelly won that. He came out hard. He came out swinging, hitting all body blows. Eminem took him, what, a week or two? You got to remember, he's been doing hella interviews. Fuck that. Fuck that. I mean, it took him a little bit more than a week or two. It took him almost two weeks. About two, Two two, two, three weeks. Close to three weeks to come back, right? 50 Cent, I'm not going to give... If, if you're 50 Cent's mentor, right? And 50 Cent was um basically doing tours and and, and smashing niggas, take, take your time off to go to the studio and smash niggas, you could have done the same thing, right? Now, I was not really feeling Eminem's diss. It wasn't that hot to me, just to me. And let's say this, I, I, I love Eminem because he's from Detroit. And Eminem has done some things in Detroit. So, for Detroit. But I felt he could have done a little bit more. But why are you... I think now Eminem is trolling now. You're going at the, these guys. And they really not thinking about you. Like Ja Rule. Why would you even go at Ja Rule? If you went at everybody and left Ja Rule whack ass out... I would have respected that a little bit more, but Ja Rule, get the fuck out of here. He, he has not been relevant since 50 Cent ended his career. He's trying to make it to where y'all remember for all the young folks that don't know what he did to Ja Rule's career who be seeing no, Ja Rule. No, he didn't Rule do it. Ja Rule did kill 50 Cent killed Ja Rule's career, not Eminem. Let's get that straight. Well, if it wasn't for him, it wouldn't be no Ja uh, 50 Cent. It doesn't so. matter. 50 killed that nigga's career, not Eminem. Now, my thing, again, with, with 50, not 50, but M M M. The thing, like, first of all, I feel like, like Fifty Cent, like I love Fifty Cent, but he he make coward moves. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. for example, I don't like whatever beef him and Ja Rule had. Like Ja Rule didn't, didn't like break the ground running like he a thug. You know what I'm saying? Ja Rule's caliber mm-hmm. of rap and caliber of music was not even in the lane for somebody like a Fifty Cent to go up and against him. You know what I'm saying? So all it's right. like. You could have just came in the rap game rapping, you know what I'm saying? Because he can't rap, you know what yeah. I'm saying? However, you came in to 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 do a diss and, and build your career off of beef, mm-hmm. and it's like I don't even respect that whole little diss era because it's like Ja Rule wasn't that artist, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like right. Ja Rule couldn't come back because he that's not what he do. You he know actually what I'm changed his style up so he could get could away get, from that hood stuff. Yeah. And like Irv, Irv was telling them to start, you know, doing more stuff for the ladies. Because actually if you go back and you catch Ja Rule in his first album, first two albums, that nigga was uh, hot. He was fire. Bitchy. And uh yeah, like now let me say this. Okay, now Eminem, you cannot get on album and diss your own moms. 
call her all type of names. You cannot dish your <laughs> either the mother of your child slash ex wife. Call her out of her name and then expect a rapper to respect them when you're not respecting them. So for them to even you know come at anybody now. I think it's more of where 50 was, M.M. was mad, was that he talked about his daughter, called out his daughter's name. And that right there, when you mention Eminem's daughter's name, which I will not do, when you mention Eminem's daughter's name, that puts a fire up under his ass and he comes at you. But now when you're going at somebody for coming at your moms and your, and, and your baby moms, you you started that. You gave them the input to talk about them because no one knew about their personal life, you started that. Same with his child, though. Like you would, you couldn't say nothing about his child if he didn't put his child in the light, right? In well, the media. His his. Oh, you talking about Eminem's child? Yeah. Eminem's child has album credits. Like she's been out here. It's plenty of people <laughs> yeah. who know. She had album credits. There's plenty oh, of people yeah. who know who Haley J is. Hey, you would not say her name on uh, the show. Well, well you said it in a good thing. So yeah, 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 good, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm listen. I'm, I'm <laughs> an Eminem fan. He's not the fan. You, he said you I'm an Eminem say. fan. I'm oh, trying yeah, to get would. some tracks with him. So. Okay. Yeah, but no, no, but you know, we we cannot take it from Eminem. He's a good artist. He's a great. He's a great rapper, but. Let, let, let me give you guys a history lesson on hip hop. Okay. Do anybody know where the term GOAT come from? The greatest of all time, the GOAT. Do anybody know which rapper brought that term and coined that that, that term and brought it to hip hop? Yeah. Who? Me. No. Lil Yachty. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> it was LL Cool J. I was about to say that. He made an album called GOAT. Yeah. Greatest of all time. He's definitely not the GOAT. Yeah. After he did that album... And named it that, then everybody started using the the goat. Well, goat kind of died, and then it came back. <laughs> right, but but LL Cool J was the first original. one, the original one, and the first to bring it to the table and, He's and, the, and the, do it. The first person right. that was known. I'm pretty sure right. it was a couple niggas in some hoods that nah, was saying. Nah. Okay, okay. Why you're do right. you think that he was the goat? <laughs> Because you gotta look at it. at that time, he had like he had the ladies appeal. The, yeah, he had the ladies appeal, and he had like. Ten albums? Did he? Yes, he did at that time. Oh, wow. And yeah, look at it. When did the goat come out? The goat came out in two thousand. Mm. Okay, so then here's another hip hop history lesson I'm going to give you guys that you don't know. Who was the first rapper to ever bring the word dope and put it on the album? And say, yo, that's dope. The first rapper, MC Light. Nope. Nas. No. KRS One. No. L O Cool J. No. Rakim. I was about I was to say going that. there. Rakim was the first rapper to ever bring dope and put it on a track and, and say, oh, that's dope. And you know what I'm saying? I got the dopest rhymes. And then when he did that, then dope just everybody started saying that they was dope. Yeah, everybody started. Yeah, no, everybody started. I'm saying, everybody I'm talking about like they started dope. it. Oh, okay. oh started, okay. But I'm just saying like nobody says that's dope anymore. Right, no, nobody says. I think you I still might got say, some old yeah, school I, niggas to say that's dope. Like, I'm from the 70s. You might say that's dope like, man, them shoes dope. But you uh-huh. ain't gonna be like, I'm the dopest around. Like, no. Nah, <laughs> You're not yeah. gonna be like, I'm the dopest um, I'm the dopest job producer. turkey on this side of the city. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, that, that's just how that go, you know. But, you know, everybody, a lot of these young people, they think that, oh, like, what kills me is is I was watching some of the, like, you got your, you got, you got your hardcore fans. And, you know, you got your hardcore fans that, that make sense. And you got your hardcore fans that don't make sense. Because a fan is nothing but a fanatic. Okay. Like, Eminem just what said some, a, 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 the corniest line in that rap that I could ever what? think of him say. He said, "You got the name of of a machine gun with no bullets, and you he, wear he said it different, and you wear a man bun or something." And somehow I he guess, said, "That's it. a good line." What's up? What's corny about that? That shit was corny. No, His name really is Machine Gun well, Kelly, and he yeah. don't got no bullets. He said it different though. But he said it a little different. But come on, that, uh, Eminem from back in the day, that was not dope. Yeah. That was not. Now, I, give I me, feel what you're saying. I, uh, give me some Marshall. Give me the Marshall Mathers, um, um, Eminem, and, and you go at at him on that type of level. And then I'm like, okay, now nah, this is this is where you at. This is where you're supposed to be. Em, get back there, Eminem. Get back there. 
and, he, he and it's all good. To get back no, he really don't. No, he's rich. He's a legend. Yeah, he's a legend. In his own mind, he's a legend. That's you why you that. need to just come on the 313 live show and put your man's on. Uh, come on. Just let me get a track <laughs> on the next album. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think he got it. I'm, honestly, M, the Kamikaze album was a good album. It is a good album. We're going to give him that. In, in one week, it sold 400,000 copies. In one week. And no artist has done that in a long time. Hip hop artists have sold four hundred thousand copies in one week. That is unheard of. I think now. Lil Wayne was like I think he did something like that with the Carter three. But we talk but look how we talking, talking about how long. About yeah. Recent, though. Yeah, yeah, recent. We talking about recent. The the highest And it wasn't no T shirts attached to it or right. nothing like that. Yeah, right. we talking about this guy in one week, four hundred thousand copies of that album. When a lot of artists like Nas and them is only seven, selling like twenty thousand. Like, no, Nas did what seventy five, eighty thousand the Same first thing. week, um, hundred thousand, some one hundred fifty thousand. But this man sold four hundred thousand copies in one week. So I'm looking by next week or at the end of the month, he should be platinum bound. For, he gonna get a Grammy for sure. Oh, he's gonna get a Grammy, and he's gonna get a, and he's gonna go platinum. So we gonna Ooh, give him that. Talking about Eminem. Eminem. Okay. Eminem. Eminem. Well, in February, we'll revisit this conversation. Yeah, we yeah and remember February. I said he was gonna get a Grammy. Okay. So when he do get it, yeah, Danny yeah. gonna bust out that twenty dollars. Yay, yay! No, well, you gonna get this dollar in 20, 31, 32 cent. <laughs> 20, 22. twenty-two cent. You, oh, you shorted me ten cent. Uh oh, uh oh, yeah. I'm playing okay. with Danny. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Our with next Danny. episode, we're trying to figure out where's Danny's <laughs> extra ten cent. <laughs> well, okay. Well, anything else y'all want to talk about before we wrap it up? I'm good, what man. Good? Beautiful episode. Clap it up for everybody. Yes. Good always episode. good. Always good. good always energy. good. The energy is always great with us three, man. And I'm just happy that we Shot are back me. doing what we do. Because he real. did not add none of those. <laughs> yeah, he no, added the last shot. None of those um, sound effects. What happened to the good sound? Oh, oh, we can do sound effects. That's <laughs> the thing. Is, oh, oh, man. We got so many new found. Listen, with this new program, we got so many new sound effects. We're getting baby. money over here, people. Yes, we're going we gonna to put it together but ladies and gentlemen we will see you guys next week peace, same peace, time peace. same back channel same back station and we're gonna see if j street is gonna be on time as he's i was about to say i hope danny is on time because i was here before everybody today. Uh, danny does be on time danny say 1 30 danny walks through that door at 1 30 on the dot so not 133 no, not 136 no she be on and time and if danny is late you know what danny does call Say, I'm going to be late. I'm this many minutes away. Mm-hmm. Then she'd be like, I'm down the street. He ain't even at home. <laughs> like that nigga with JC said, I'm down the street. J, J Street is still on the freeway. <laughs> no, he's that still nigga. in the bed. Like, I'm down the street. I'm man. down the street. Yeah. Well, we're working on it. We're working on it. Okay. All right, y'all. See y'all next week. Peace. Peace and love.